Hi, my name is Lane Smith. I'm with the Sun Coast Fly Fishers. Uh, I'm up here at the uh, 2014 Conclave in at the Plantation Inn in Crystal River. And today I'm going to be tying for you a nice little redfish fly. Uh, this particular fly uh, I've been tying for quite a number of years and been very successful with redfish, catching redfish on it. I tie it in a variety of uh, colors. My most popular is the rust color. I also tie it in chinchilla when I'm uh, fishing over oyster beds. But we're going to tie it in the regular redfish for fishing over uh, grass beds. Okay, this is a fly. It's called the redfish merlot. Oops. It's called the redfish merlot. And it's a dynamite little fly. Uh, I sent this fly to Mexico to catch redfish one time with a friend of mine. And uh, she came back from Mexico and she told me, uh, you know that redfish fly you gave me? I says, yeah. She says, well, I hate to tell you this, but I didn't catch a single redfish with your fly. I says, really? She says, yeah. She says, I couldn't keep the tarpon off of it long enough to try to red catch redfish. She was catching 60 to 80 pound tarpon on this particular fly. Uh, if you tie it for tarpon, tie it with a slightly larger hook. Uh, the hook I'm using here is a mosquito hook, uh, size one or one aught, two aught. Uh, and uh, the, uh, if you do it for tarpon, I would go to like a maybe an Aki hook, something that's a little heavier. Uh, it'll sink a little bit better, a little more. Uh, the lighter hook, the lighter mosquito hook, uh, I like to use when I'm doing uh, redfish fly because I'm fishing skinnier water. All right, we're going to attach our thread, and we're going to run it right up to the eye of the hook. We're going to tie in a pair of bead chain eyes. Uh, I usually like a, a medium-sized bead chain. You take a few wraps over this way, a few wraps that way. That basically is centering that bead up. Then we're going to take and do your figure of eight wraps, like everybody knows how to do, I hope. And we'll do it about a half a dozen times. And then I'm also going to take and do the same figure eight wraps, only this time I'm going to do it over top of the hook instead of below the hook like I just did. And what this is going to do, this is going to solidify those eyes. They're not going to go anywhere. Okay, and then we'll just take and wrap around the base of that to cinch up all those loose threads in there. And I'll tie them and I'll lock that, those eyes in and they won't go anywhere. Run our thread back to the back of the hook. We're going to tie in a green, olive green marabou. About the same length as the hook shank. We're going to tie that in at the end with a few wraps. And we're going to come in behind that and just going to prop it up a little bit. And then we're just going to take and lay that feather out over top of that fly and wrap down over top of it to create a little bulk for the body. We're going to trim that off. Back wrap over. Okay, now we're going to add a little flash. And basically, all I'll do is I take a couple strands and then we'll fold that, oh, probably in quarters. loops. We'll have a nice little bunch. And then basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to, to make it easier, a lot of people will tie it in on the side and then flip it over and tie it on the other side. Too many steps for me. So I like to take and wrap mine around the thread, just like that. Okay? And then I'm going to take that and I'm going to lay it right on top so that it comes down either side of that feather and just tie it in 
all in one shot. So now I have my flash mixed in with my feather and it's all in one process rather than doing a, a two or three step process. Okay, at this time we're going to tie in our saddle hackles. And basically this is, uh, you take a nice uh, saddle with some nice long skinny little feathers on it. This is going to represent a, uh, it either represent a shrimp or a crab, either one. These would be uh, the tentacles on the crab. And we take two in place on each side. I'm going to measure those so that they come back just past the end of that marabou tail. I'm going to notch these. The reason I notch these is because when I tie these in, the barbules that are that I've cut away is going to help lock that in so that those uh, feathers don't end up sliding out. You can pull on those and pull on those and they will not pull out. Okay, then we'll take another pair and do for the other side. Measure them for the same length. Again, we'll notch them on either side. Hey, what? I'm going to try a different pair of scissors. These don't seem to be doing very well. There we go. That's a little better. Now you can see that notch a little easier. Okay. There's the notch. Okay, we're going to go ahead and take and lay that in. Just tie that down. Oops, I notched a little too close on that one, brother. And from there, we're going to add a little bit of gold holographic flash to the sides. Redfish have a tendency to like gold very much for some reason. Again, we'll take and fold that in half. Trim those. Wrap them around our standing thread. Hold them so they're like in a V shape. And we're going to slide that right up, lay it on the top, tie it in so that it goes down either side of the fly. And then the last piece that we're going to tie in is going to be a rabbit strip. Now this is a uh, a cross-cut rabbit strip. A lot of people tie with zonkers. I find that it lays much, much nicer when uh, you're tying with the, the uh, cross-cut because you can uh, hold your material in a lot better. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take and uh, Cut a little of the fur away so that I have a little tab there that I can tie in. I'm going to tie that tab in right in front of the feathers. Tie it down nice and solid. Run my thread forward to the eyes, the bead chain eyes. And all you do is stroke that back. Now, one thing that I should have mentioned before I tied it in, there's two ends to this material. Okay? If you grab the wrong end, you're going to end up tying it in backwards because all your material is going to go forward. So you want to grab the correct end so that your leading edge is going to be your uh, uh, base material, your uh, leather part portion of the material. All right. So with that facing forward, I'm going to stroke everything backwards. 
and you're going to lie, uh, lay these in in successive wraps. Okay, you don't want to overlap them. You want to lay them next to each other as you stroke forward. Okay, so one right in front of the other, just like that. And stroke your material back as you're doing this. And this makes a nice, smooth fly. Once you get up to the eyes, I'm going to take and tie that off. A few wraps. And pull everything back, and I'm going to tie over top of that. And I'm going to wrap backwards towards the be uh, bend of the hook so that I'm overwrapping that material so that I lock it in good and tight. Okay, we're going to trim that material off the excess. Tie this in. Now, I'm going to take a few wraps between the eyes, both from the right and from the left in a kind of like a figure eight style. All right. And then finish off in front of the eyes. We do our whip finish. Hold it down nice and tight. Cut that off. Now you can coat this with either uh, head cement, you can use uh, the new UV products that they have out now. Uh, I found a really nice one out in California called, uh, it comes from a company called Wahoo International. And uh, basically they were a surfboard company and they got into uh, the UV materials for fly tying. And it's a great, great product because it doesn't dry tacky. You don't have to go back over with, with uh, the alcohol pads or all that kind of stuff like some of them do. This is a four ounce bottle that I've been using forever. And roll that over and touch it on the other side. Stroke that with the UV light. And we're done. And that is the Redfish Merlot.